Canterbury Employers Chamber of Commerce CEO Leanne Watson is with me. Good evening. Good evening, Chris. Thanks for your time this evening. How are your members coping? How is the Canterbury business community, in your view, getting on? Well, look, businesses um, are clearly uh, pretty challenged at the moment in uh, lockdown. But of course, they have also been through this before. Um, they are incredibly resilient. Uh, and we've, we've seen a number of businesses who can operate um, from home, but we do need to recognise that, of course, there are many who can't, such as our bars, our restaurants, uh, some of our manufacturers. Um, that, they're the ones that are really hurting at the moment under lockdown. You've also been calling for the government to change its, or previously change the way it does things when it comes to restrictions on the likes of immigration. Break that down for me, please. Well, we know that um, for businesses uh, prior to the lockdown, one of the biggest issues that they were having was access to labour. Uh, we, with the current immigration settings uh, and a, you know, pretty much a, um, a labour market that is completely um, in use, uh, for businesses who are continuing to grow and some of those who perhaps downsized a little last year, uh, getting access to people uh, to help them to continue to grow uh, and grow our economy has been the biggest challenge that they've been facing for quite some time. Yeah, a lot of restaurateurs I've been speaking to in Christchurch have been saying they may have to, this summer, have to consider closing at least one or two days a week because they simply don't have the staff. But then, of course, the other argument I suppose the government is saying was employ the Kiwis. But it's not that simplistic, is it? Well, no, it's not, because actually what we're seeing is record low um, unemployment rates. And so I would say that those people in our community um, who are employable uh, have been employed. Uh, and, you know, there are many, many people who are in training and we you know, fully recognise it's a great thing to have uh, people in training. But for some industries, that takes time. So we need time to build the training and build the pipeline. And the, the need for some businesses is right now. And so we do need to look at you know, the immigration settings to make sure that we can continue to operate and to grow our economy. Are you satisfied with what the government's doing so far with uh, its, its payments again, the, the so-called resurgent payments, the wage subsidy schemes? Is that enough to tie most Canterbury businesses over in the meantime? Yeah, um, look, it's certainly, you know, the, the wage subsidy uh, opening last Friday and the resurgent support payment um, has been very welcomed. Um, I guess time will tell in terms of how long we are in this current situation for. Uh, but I did hear the Minister of Finance, Grant Robinson, this morning talk about uh, the fact that, you know, they will continue to explore other avenues if, um, if further financial support is needed. Um, so that's very, very encouraging. And, you know, businesses should do what they did last time and um, keep a very, very close eye on, uh, you know, for those that are still trading, but they won't be up to normal trading limits. They should be keeping a close eye on uh, the impact. And, you know, if they're getting pretty close to the, you know, 30% uh, revenue drop for the resurgent support payment or 40% for the wage subsidy, they should apply. Um, because actually we do know that last time there was a significant number of people that applied. Um, so I would say get in early to make sure that you um, have got that well organised for your business. Are you hearing from businesses who are a little bit frustrated at the fact that once again today, uh, thankfully touch wood, uh, we have no COVID community cases in Christchurch, in fact, in the South Island. Is there a level of frustration for businesses saying, then why don't we open? Or do they accept that there is this incubation period where we still have to wait and see for, for more days to come? Yeah, I think there's a real mix in the community, and this is probably what makes it quite difficult. I mean, there's no doubt there'll be a degree of anxiety across our community and, and in fact probably across the business community as well. Um, we know that this Delta variant is a different beast. Um, you know, we, we've seen obviously it grow very, very quickly in the North Island um, with, and the, you know, the huge number numbers of people that we're talking about in terms of um, those that are in self-isolation, including 120 in the South Island. I think that does reinforce the importance of um, doing this in a very measured and considered way. And, and no doubt the government have been very cautious about this. Um, but what I would say is that we, what we want to see and hear from the government is real clarity around what that um, pathway looks like to move down the alert levels and, one, and then what, what those alert levels look like. Because we know that we've learned you know, a huge number of uh, lessons um, from 2020. And so what are the things that um, we can take on board, uh, meaning that when we do move back down to alert levels, what does alert level three look like in 2021 versus what it looked like in 2020? Mm, because then at least businesses can then plan for the next stage, right? At the moment, is it making life a bit tricky not knowing what exactly alert level three looks like or two yeah, or right. one? Yeah, yep, that's absolutely right. And we, you know, we know that we've got 
you know, many businesses who are just waiting for the announcements and then they've got to do a whole lot of work to, you know, to gear their businesses and their staff back up to reopen. I was talking to a manufacturer um, just earlier today who uh, he said if we go into level three on, um, you know, Friday night, if we get the announcement on Friday to say that, you know, from um, midnight onwards on Friday night, we are in alert level three, he will be gearing his factory up because he's got a massive order to go overseas on Tuesday. Um, so this is where that clarity um, becomes really, really important. And, you know, if, the more of our economy we can get back up and um, running in a safe and managed way, um, the more the impact, both from an economic point of view, but also from a social point of view, will be um, minimised or mitigated. Mm. Well said. Canterbury Employers Chamber of Commerce CEO, Leanne Watson, thanks so much for your time this evening. Thanks, Chris.